Hey, it's Pallavi Kashyap. Welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome everyone. In today's special episode, I have my friend Dan Stoll, who is joining me all the way from Michigan. A little bit about Dan. Dan is a wellness coach and his passion areas are mindset and nutrition. A bit into Dan's personal story. So Dan was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2015 and in the same year, he had to remove his entire colon in a surgery. Now, this experience sparked his holistic and personal development journeys that he is into right now. Through years of adversity, Dan pushed through with the tools that he learned along the way and graduated from his childhood dream school, Michigan State University in May 2022. A bit on his professional journey. In 2022, during the pandemic, Dan founded Nova Fusion, which is a lifestyle brand that inspires and educates about all things related to mindset and wellness. Through his coaching services, Dan supports individuals in two categories, namely the first one, people with chronic illnesses to ensure they regain control of their health holistically. And number two, individuals looking to maintain and optimize their well-being. So with that, let me welcome Dan to this show. Hello and welcome, Dan, once again, and so lovely having you here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited to uh, you know, have this conversation. Yeah, so uh, Dan, you have uh, mentioned so many things, but I think uh, probably we will speak more about your health and wellness journey because we have a story behind that. And that also led to you building up Nova Fusion, your brand. So with that, uh, like I have my first question for all my guests amongst the different roles that you play or the different hats that you wear, like you're interested in health and wellness, you're interested in mindset, working on your mindset, you're interested in nutrition. But if I have to give you a choice, which is the one that, you know, fires you up or you're most passionate about? Yeah, I would say mindset for sure, because you know, I think that's the foundation to all other areas of your life, whether that's your relationships, your health, your career. If like your mindset's not right, then you're probably not going to take the actions that you need to do to get your health um, in a good shape. So like if your mindset's not good, you may not eat as healthy as you need to. You may not go to the gym early in the morning. So that's why I think mindset is so important. And that's why I try to share all the lessons that I've learned along my journey and just share them with others. And so they can apply them and live the best life that they can live. Hmm. You have a very strong mindset, I know, and there's a story behind that. So I just mentioned, we mentioned, we spoke about ulcerative colitis. So for my audience who have absolutely no clue or, you know, if they want to know about this, can you just tell us about what exactly ulcerative colitis is and how does it happen? Is there, I mean, do you, is it heredity or, you know, some of those points if you could share? Yeah. So ulcerative colitis is an autoimmune disease. It's um, actually an inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, code name for that is IBD. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is it's inflammation throughout your entire, well, ulcerative colitis is inflammation throughout your entire colon, but a similar disease, Crohn's disease, which I also have, that's through your entire digestive tract. So the inflammation will grow and it'll actually form ulcers in your colon and your small intestine. And um, that's actually what happened to me with the ulcerative colitis. I had ulcers in my colon and that actually resulted in me in having two surgeries to remove my colon. But um, it, it's a it's a tough disease to deal with on a daily basis. People have it from severe to mild and um, each case is different. We do know about stages in a certain disease. So because you had to undergo a surgery, was it something like very severe and could it not be detected in the early stages? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and they actually don't know how ulcerative colitis or Crohn's occurs. It just kind of happens. They say it may be an environmental trigger, but, you know, we don't really know. I think a lot of it is stress over chronic stress over a period of time. And then that can cause disease in your body. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I was actually diagnosed the summer going into my senior year of high school, just about like two or three weeks before classes started. And I was on a camping trip with my girlfriend at the time, and we were just in the beach having a good time. And all of a sudden, like my stomach started cramping really bad. And I actually had to like hightail it out of the water to the bathrooms. And like, I had no idea what was going on. And that continued for the rest of our trip, the rest of the few weeks after that. Um, we just thought it was like a stomach bug. Like I may have eaten something bad and just had a bad reaction. Um, but after it continued for over a month, that's when we realized like, yeah, this is probably something more serious and I need to get checked out. So um, they put me on some pills and steroids at first just to help calm down the inflammation. That did not work for me. And shortly after that, I was put on IV infusions. That's the next step in treatment after pills. And they do that because it's more potent and it goes straight to the bloodstream. And during all this time, I was actually homebound my whole senior year. I couldn't make it to any classes. I was just in my bed pretty much the whole year just because my illness was getting worse. And um, I actually had surgeries. That's the third phase in treatments. It's pills, uh, those infusions, and then surgery. And I ended up having my first of two surgeries four days after walking graduation in high school. So um, a lot going on during that period of my life. Since I'm also into alternative healing therapies, uh, I mean, what I have also learned and understood is when it is something emergency, if there is an emergency condition, like you need a surgery or you need an immediate medical attention, I think uh, during that part, best is uh, your modern medicine, Western medicine. But if it is something chronic and which is, you know, which is going to, be with you for a longer period of time uh, as per my personal understanding uh, you know a lot of uh, alternative healing therapies help you so in your journey have you uh, or did you try any of those therapies to kind of you know uh, bring you out from that situation or help you at least heal faster or improve the condition that you were in yeah, I've, I've tried alternate therapies, but I don't think for long enough to see the results. Mm -hmm. Like I've tried acupuncture, um, different types of yoga, including a Bikram yoga. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really big on mindfulness and meditations to help, you know, cleanse out your system of all of that chronic stress that you may accumulate over the years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably what helped me the most, just those meditations, the mindfulness and, um, stress management so like I know it's not like an alternative healing but it, it for me it kind of is and just to have that even like breathing like just focusing on your breath and not your thoughts and um I think that's the biggest thing for me is just alternative breath work and meditations mindfulness yeah they do come under alternative therapies uh, your meditation and and breath work actually these two are the most underrated i feel sometimes people think oh they are so easy i mean you know let's not do it let's try something complex something which has 10 steps to do you know instead of doing something which is very simple you know but they are very potent very powerful but they are i mean i am a big I, I promote so much on my social media and everywhere on meditation. So what you rightfully said, uh, it, it does help. And uh, also when you spoke about stress and all uh, related to emotions, this thing came to my mind that sometimes, by many times, many of our diseases are emotionally, you know, could be triggered because of our emotions. So you have been mentioning about stress. You are in this journey and you have research, you are doing a lot of research still. So have you come across any article or any writer which says, you know, emotions could be triggering these kind of ailments or diseases? Yeah, it's actually something that I've been looking into more recently. And um, there's an organization out there. It's called samehereglobal.org. Okay. And I've actually had the privilege of connecting with the founder. And um, what he talks about is, uh, mental health. That's what it is, mental health, but he reverse engineers it. And it's all about like stress management in a sense. Mm -hmm. And so they offer tons of resources on their website for anyone battling mental health, because 
you know, they say the statistics are one in five people battle it, but here they're changing the conversation and they're saying five of five people battle mental health because we all have stress, traumas, and adversities that we deal with throughout our life. And, you know, it's not like people are just immune to that. Like we're all human. We all have feelings. And so um, I think his, he's really opened my eyes to show how stress can really store in your body and in your emotions. And um, it can create patterns and, you know, you need to break the pattern and then release all of those traumas that you've accumulated. And, you know, that's a process and it's not something you can do overnight. Like, as you know, with meditations, you can't just, I mean, maybe, but I was like, you, you can't do one meditation and totally heal yourself. Um, it's something that you need to make a routine of. Um, but yeah, that's a great resource. Same here, global.org for, anyone battling mental illness or just wants to learn about how stress can store in your body. And uh, because of this, you have to develop a mindset which will help you in your journey. So for a person or for any normal person, an average person who does not develop this kind of a mindset, I mean, why I'm asking is this because when you go through a challenge like this, there are two ways that I personally feel. Either you go up or you go down. If you're going down, you go further down. But if you want to at least stop that going down, you have to look for a way that is going to at least not let you further go down or help you go up. So in that way, you have developed a mindset. So just tell us if I have that mindset, how would it help me if I do not have that mindset? How I mean, two different people having a mindset versus not having a, a positive mindset. So tell us that difference. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, simple analogy is like seeing the glass half full versus half empty. Um, the person that sees it half full, they're going to see opportunities. The person that sees it half empty, they're going to see problems. And, you know, that that's just like a short sum of what's going to happen is like, it's a chain reaction. Things are going to snowball. So maybe five minutes later, you stub your toe. Maybe you like miss a call. Someone cancels on you. So it, it starts this like negative day almost when you're in that mindset, because it's almost like you're looking for all of the bad things to happen. It's like you're expecting it to happen almost. Whereas a positive mindset, you're looking for the good things to happen. You're looking for the opportunities. You see solutions and um, I think that's just the biggest thing in life is having a growth mindset and, you know, not looking at failure as something that, um, is going to stop you or stagnate your progress, but that's actually giving you feedback. And you're it's saying that you're, you're not doing something quite right here, but you can improve it. And then next time you can be better. And so, um, just having that growth mindset, I think that's really what separates, successful from unsuccessful even um it, it just makes all of the difference and pretty much any area of your life so if you like you just compare two people like start at their mindset start at their habits and um i think that's what the separators are when you talk about habits i had this question in my mind what are the, those habits that you daily practice you know to keep you going to keep you that state of mind that state of health that will you know push you to do things better so what are those three practices yeah so probably the most important is journaling um, that's something I've done since 2018 and you know it's not like a 13 year old girl in her diary journaling um, yeah it's it's more like <laughs> Uh, like a mental dump almost of your day or even like setting up your next day. Like uh, I got a lot on my mind tonight, but I know I have things to do tomorrow. What can I prioritize and do like a one, two, three plan of what I'm going to do tomorrow. So that sets you up and be that you're focused. Um, and even like the bad things going on in your life, it's good to just write those down on paper, get it out of your head and then you can filter it better. And kind of like see things for what they are. You don't have that emotional attachment as much. Like you're still going to um, like feel and have emotions, but um, I think it's a good way to get it out. Kind of like just venting to a good friend that, you know, listens and accepts you. They're not going to judge you. Um, you can have that all the time if you, you just have your journal next to you. So um, you're never alone in a sense with that. Um, 
number two, I would say exercise, just good to keep your body moving. It's, uh, develops your confidence, your courage. You, you don't always want to go to the gym, but when you go, you're going to feel better. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That always happens. Um, and yeah, you, it's just good to get the blood moving. It's good for your overall health. You're going to feel better. And then something else that I've been doing pretty consistently is cold exposure, which is, um, <laughs> I, if you're following me on Instagram, you'll see me in a, my cold tub out here in Michigan, but, um, that has like numerous health benefits. I'm not going to list through them all right now, but it does actually uh, spike your dopamine up and that's like a mood receptor and uh, for like the reward system in your body, but that'll spike it up, up by like 250% for the next three, four hours. So you're going to have that jolt of energy, probably more than a cup of coffee. And, um, you know, it helps uh, promote blood circulation and all of these other good things in your body that just makes you feel good, like exercise. So, um, you know, you see football athletes after a game, they're in the cold tubs that helps reduce inflammation. So it, it's just a good biohack that I've kind of found. And um, a lot of a lot more people have been doing it recently, too. So um, more studies are coming out, more people are doing it. So I think it's really something that is going to be more mainstream, um, as we see, but like right now, as I talk about it, like, no way, I'm not doing that, Dan, but, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've been, uh, I have been, uh, Win Hof, I think he's the guy, but I somehow feel, you know, I mean, that's, that's not for really, me. I mean, it, <laughs> right. it, it does have a lot, many health benefits, but somehow I'm still not, you know, I, I get those shivers already, you know, those goosebumps already. So, yeah. but yeah, I will try it one day, <laughs> but not yeah. immediately. And um, one more thing about that, like, it's good for your mental toughness and resilience. Like, that's another thing, like wellness and resilience that I kind of preach with my brand here. But um, it's like going to the gym in the morning. You do not want to get into that cold tub or that cold shower. But if you do it, you're going to realize that, okay, this is not going to kill me. I can do this. It's just cold water. Like you start telling yourself these things and you just develop that grit, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that's another thing that um, it, it, it really does help your mindset and just develop that, uh, that resolve that we all need to be successful. Interesting. All these tools and techniques, if we um can use them to help us grow, then we will be superhuman soon. <laughs> and all three of those things that I mentioned, they're free. Yeah, you can yeah. journal pen and paper like that. That's really inexpensive. Uh, the exercise, you can go out and run, you can do push-ups. Yeah. If it's cold outside, you can just go outside in the cold or you can have a cold shower. But like yeah. all of those things are inexpensive or free and they're all going to make you feel 10 times better so um even uh, your meditation and uh, the breath work you don't need any tools you don't need any expensive gadgets you just have to just close your eyes and simple things are actually not you know given that much value but if you put a price tag on it then i think that <laughs> there's a perception that okay it's expensive or i need to put some money that means it's going to give me some value so it's i mean randomly this thing came to my mind yeah, no, that's a great point too. That's that's four things that anyone out there can apply, no matter where they are, no matter what stage of life they're in, and it's gonna improve their life. So I'm glad you touched on that as well. <laughs> uh, coming back to a serious question, um, I have this question to all my guests: like, what has been your uh, biggest challenge? And whenever we have a challenge, there is a lesson that we're supposed to learn something from that challenge. So uh, what has been your biggest challenge? And you know, what was your learning in that? Yeah, so definitely um, a period in my health journey. So got diagnosed in 2015, 2016, I had those surgeries. That's debatably <laughs> the toughest time right there. Um 2017 was like a recovery year for me. I was just like trial and error, figuring things out a little bit better after surgeries. But then here's what happened. Um, 2018, uh, February, it was just this perfect storm that happened. I ended up getting mono. 
I was just really fatigued and tired from that. I ended up getting E. coli that was just messing up my stomach really bad. And I ended up dropping to 118 pounds because I ended up having like an intestinal blockage as well. So those three things kind of like added up and in like a two week time, I ended up going to the emergency room. But then on top of that, I was in a relationship for about like three and a half years and my girlfriend ended up breaking up with me in that same month. So all four of those things, um, it just left me like just naked and alone. <laughs> it, was just, yeah. it was like a rock bottom for me, honestly. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want to go back to places where I was like back to my surgeries. Cause I was at like my low in weight again, when I had my surgeries, I was at that 118 mark and that was my lowest. So like I spent a whole year, like trying to rebuild myself back up in 2017 and then I just crashed in a matter of four weeks. So it's like, that was a really big hit on my mental. It's like, I'm never going to get over this. Like, I'm never going to get better. And um, I I had like a, a pity. I'm not going to lie. Like I had a pity party for about like two weeks. I just felt like really bad about myself. Like everything is happening to me, not for me. And um, I had to really dig deep and like figure out what I want to do and just make small steps. So what I decided to do and like the things that I've learned, um, I ended up making a commitment to go to the gym like four or five times a week because I was just so upset with how much weight I lost. Like it, I was upset about losing my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> yeah. The weight, like that was upsetting me the most is like, I spent all this like a full year trying to rebuild and it's just gone. So I was in the gym consistently. I made it a point to eat better with my diet. While I was at the gym, I was listening to podcast. That's not something that I was doing at all, but I was like, okay, I'm just going to evolve and get better. I'm going to learn new things every single day. And I started listening to Tony Robbins. I know you're a big fan of his. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think we connected the, through Tony Robbins group first, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, we did. And yeah. I think it was like in 2020. So like I was still fairly new to this stuff. But um, yeah, I think we were just like in a an event together. And <laughs> I don't know how we connected, but we've been connected ever since. Yeah. So yeah, honestly, you're one of like, I don't really have as many connections from that, like going back that long in my personal development journey. So um. <laughs> you mentioned about Tony Robbins. Uh, for me, he is a big inspiration. But for you, who has been your inspiration? Yeah. So for me, it's probably my grandpa. Um, it, he's just always been a, a role model for me growing up. Um, you know, he he had his his own company, and I didn't really know like what he did, but I knew that he had a nice house, a nice life, a nice lifestyle, and. You know, I would even like visit him at his office when I was younger and like just draw pictures on the wall and hang them up. And they're still there today even. Wow. But um, he, he would always just like instill these these wisdom nuggets into me. And um, he, like I go out to lunch with them like every week and there's always something new that I learn, even if it's like a, a same story that he's told me like 10 times, like he can still like just say something that I haven't heard before. Yeah. Um, but really like his work ethic, his discipline, his integrity, he's, he's a really good person. He cares about the people around him. And, you know, that that's something that a, a lot of times can um, get looked over and be taken for granted, you know, but um you know, not, not this guy. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm really glad that he's in my life and, um, yeah, I wouldn't be the person that I am today if he wasn't in my life and always looking out after me, like during my illnesses, uh, during that time, like a lot of family members, um, we kind of split, <laughs> like, it's just, it's just how it was. Um, yeah family stuff <laughs> but um he always stayed with me and whatever I needed whatever help I needed just someone to talk to even get advice from he's always there so 
I don't take that for granted. And um, I'm just lucky that I have someone like that in my life. So I think he's also the inspiration for your entrepreneurial journey because after your MBA, you didn't want to take up a salary job. So is, is that right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, there's like a second grade book that I have. I don't know where it's at. It bothers me. But um, it says, like, what do you want to be when you're older? And I said, like, grandpa. And it's because, like, he was an entrepreneur. He had all these things. But um, it's always something that I was like, OK, I see him doing this. And then I see my parents working for other people and like an employee. I'm like, OK, I don't want that, but I do want this. So indirectly he also just like showed me what I wanted to be when I grew up mm -hmm. and um yeah for sure with the entrepreneurship like once I got in my teens and I kind of knew what this stuff was more I was like this is what I want to do um I do not want to be an employee somewhere like I want to work my own hours do my own thing mm -hmm. I wanted to create a clothing brand for the longest time so that's not what Nova Fusion is but managed to make it happen so that's like a childhood dream like checked off right there um but yeah he, he's the inspiration for so much for me and including the entrepreneurship and that's kind of why i'm doing what i'm doing now uh since you mentioned about your brand nova fusion so tell tell us what is the mission of your brand yeah so i think the mission right now is really to be like an icon of inspiration for anyone going through a tough time because I started with like wanting to share my health journey and really help people in similar situations. But, you know, now I recognize that not a lot of people are going through what I went through and, um, you know, they might not be able to relate with that specifically, but there there's adversity that I went through and had to overcome. There's hard things. And that's something that others can relate to whatever they're going through. Um, and so I just, want to be like a beacon of hope for people that are going through a tough time that you know you can get through it and my philosophy is experiences plus mindset equals growth and so those experiences they don't have to crush you like you said you can go up or you can go down and I want to show people that you can go up and that's that's what my brand is um just to be a beacon of hope for people and uh, show them a better way and uh, about success, when do you think uh, you'll call yourself successful? Or if I have put it another way, what is your definition of success? Yeah, um, I was going to say, I don't know if I'll ever reach it, but um, I guess I will because it's a process, um, you know, being successful. You know, I don't know if it's an end destination or if it's a process. That's something that you could debate. But um, I think it's just doing the things that you want to do, living out an authentic life. So for me, I did not want to go into the corporate world. So for me, being successful is being an entrepreneur. That doesn't mean I'm making a hundred thousand in a year right now. That's a goal that I want to do. And that'll be part of being successful. But right now in this stage of my life, like pursuing the entrepreneurship, not being tied to corporate um, doing things that excite me every day, having these types of conversations. Um, that's, that's what drives me. And that's what makes me happy. That's what success to me is right now. And, you know, that'll change as I grow and continue to evolve. But um, yeah, I think it's really just being authentic to you and leaning into that. I wanted to ask you about uh, personal development. So you're very passionate about personal development. So for my audience who do not know about personal development or how it helps, uh, what would you like to say? Yeah, so <laughs> it's really like a lifestyle, right? Um, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like having that growth mindset to get better every day. And, you know, we can either go down, stay stagnant or improve. And it's like, well, what do you want? Um, if you're content with watching Netflix all day and like enjoying those things, then, you know, I'm not here to judge you. And that's totally fine. Like that could be your definition of success. Like you have your job, it pays the bills, you come back home and you watch a show that you love. Like that could be someone's definition of success. And there's honestly nothing wrong with that. Um, 
that's like us trying to impose our will and be like, no, we yeah. shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it's really like a lifestyle. And, you know, I think a big part of it and why people don't totally dive into it all is because they have limiting beliefs or maybe someone in the past told them that they can't do accomplish their dreams or do what they want to do. So I think that might um, prevent people from even trying, like they're just afraid of failing so much. And they just think it'll be a big waste of time that they don't even put the effort to even like try. But um, if you just try, you're going to find that you're going to learn as you go. And you're going to, you're going to, it's like a path, you're going to think you're going this way, you're going to go this way. And uh, that's just life figuring things out as you go. So um, yeah, I guess that's my answer to it. So I don't ramble. Too I'll just, I'll add to it. Uh, I think it's a very interesting journey. It might look boring. Initially, it might look boring. But once you are in it, it, it is like some, uh, some dope or some drug or whatever, you know, at least for me, it's like that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always striving to do better. And that's how my growth has been. Otherwise, if you look at me, like three, four years back, five years back, when I started, I mean, from that person to today who I am, there has been a great shift. So, and, and if you ever ask me who would I choose, or, you know, if I have to choose that old Pallavi or this, I will any which way, you know, any day choose this version of me. So yeah, for anybody who's listening, I think if you're not in the personal development journey, then today is the day you should get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, today's the day. And one more thing, like, I I love what you said about like the journey of who you're becoming, because it's really not about those end goals. And like, for me, a big part of it, like during my health journey was obviously getting healthier. Like I wanted to feel better, but another thing was like traveling to California. And that's something that I ended up doing in 2019. Mm -hmm. And, you know, throughout those past three, four years actually of like being sick and like just going through those health journeys, I realized that it wasn't about getting healthier. It wasn't about being able to travel to California and enjoy my time there. Mm -hmm. It was about just all of the things that I've learned throughout those four years. It wasn't like one thing in particular, but if I were to compare, okay, Dan in 2015 to 2019, it's, night and day and then you compare Dan to 2022 about to be 2023 like again it's just so different and you know I think the main point of what I'm trying to say here is like it's about the process of who you become and it's not about the goals because once you attain your goal once you get there there's always going to be a new goal that you want to achieve like most people aren't satisfied with what they get. There's always something new that you want to achieve. So um, just fall in love with the process and who you're becoming and loving yourself a little bit more every day. And um, I think that's a good place to be. Yeah, interesting. And tell us a few projects that you're working on. Already you showed us your uh, lifestyle brand, of, you know, what you've already promoted and published and it's already live. What are the other behind the scenes projects that you're working on? Yeah, so um, interesting projects. Yeah, I wasn't gonna mention this, but um, I've been working on like a cookbook actually. <laughs> so wow. like, I'm really, yeah, I'm really big on like nutrition and helping people because I think especially with the American diet here, it's just filled with garbage. <laughs> like no filter. It's just it's just all trash. So um. I want to show people that there are better ways and you can eat whole foods and be healthy and it's not expensive. Like you don't have to pay, like spend half of your paycheck just to eat healthy. Like there's good ways to do that. Working on getting my own podcast out. That's something that, <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. I want to share stories of adversity and inspiration uh, working on one-on-one coaching right now, um, helping people with their mindset and wellness. And then I also got like a 21 day resilience challenge that I'm working on. So I got a lot of ideas, but I just need to like prioritize right now. That's the thing. Like we can all see those shiny things and want to work on them. 
Uh, for any entrepreneurs out there, like that's, that's a big thing, especially if you're like a one man army, like myself, um, yeah, know. you don't want to like really prioritize your efforts on the things that matter and not do all of those things, um, that are all like exciting, like the cookbook and all that, like you guys are going to get the cookbook, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's not going to be right now. <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait for good yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, it'll be worth the wait. I promise awesome. that. Awesome. So my last question is, Dan, I mean, you're working on so many amazing stuff and, and there's surely going to be changes around with at least people who are getting in touch with you, with your product services and all of that. So what is the legacy that you want to leave behind or how do you want people to remember you as? Yeah, I mean, just overall a good person that, you know, turn some bad things that happen to them into a positive and just be like a light for others. Like, um, you know, I read books from like Marcus Aurelius back in Rome and like, I want to be timeless like that and like a good role model figure. So like a thousand years down, like I, I still want the things that are in my blog post or when I write a book, that'll be another project that I work on in a few years. Um, like I want these things to like these lessons that I've learned throughout my hardships. I don't want them to go to waste. I want them to be used by others. And I think that's the biggest thing is making sure that all the pain that I went through has a purpose. Mm, absolutely. So for my viewers, my audience who want to connect with you, or be in touch with you, get updated about all the projects that you're working on, where are you most reachable? Which, which platform do you access the most? Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Nova Fusion Co. Um, I'm on there pretty much daily at this point. So if you want to find me, if you want to stay in touch, that's where, if you want to find out anything that's coming up, that's where I'll be at. Awesome. And uh, so that was my last question, Dan. Uh, however, I do ask this, if there's anything that I should have asked you and, you know, which is very important and you want to share with my audience, but I missed out or I forgot or I haven't asked. So if there's something, yeah. uh, please share. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really have anything. Um, you know, if anyone just wants to connect, like I'm I'm a good resource for anyone with like wellness or mindset related things. If you want to just develop that a little bit more, if you need help with your like a chronic illness. Um, yeah, I'm just here for a resource and anyone out there that needs help. So yeah, that, that's all I'm here for. <laughs> yes, and uh, I also wanted to man mention Dan and me, I mean, I, we are planning on working together on a collab sometime in the future. I don't know how, how far is the future it could be three months, six months, or could be a year also, but we are also, we are thinking about a collab where we want to, uh, I want to share my healing perspective and, and he, he is uh, good in health mindset and uh, nutrition. So, you know, we want to combine that and, and see what comes out. So till that time, uh, maybe I'll have you in another round, you know, when that releases, maybe for another, you know, talk. So till that time, till then, till we meet again, I want to wholeheartedly thank you for sharing your story, for inspiring my audience with, you know, if they're going through any challenges, how to come out through the challenge. And if somebody wants to connect, if you could help them. So that would also be great. And with that note, I want to, once again, mention a special thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and all the other ones that we've had. So um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to doing more things with you in the future. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye.